planted this crop here in, in the 5th of July. It's a Spitfire and stubble turnip mix. Uh, it was drilled it was drilled in the 5th and they got an application 2,000 gallons of slurry and then it's a split application of fertiliser, uh, 85 units and it just split. So and it was uh, very slow to come away to start. It was just really, it's been really, really dry but in the last what, three weeks it's, it's just jumped. I think just a bit more moisture about it and I think the fertiliser it's really started to go now. But it's such a long time we didn't do anything. Uh, but Great. Not. Yeah. Well, um, Stuart, it, it uh, has kept ahead of uh, weeds, which has been a, a major challenge for many of the other brassica crops. Um, red shank and charlocks in particular have uh, massively reduced the amount of leaf on a whole lot of brassica crops. But obviously the amount of fertility you've given it and your time of sowing uh, and so on has got it away. Um, really, we want to give ourselves a minimum of about 80 days for these crops. They're much bigger than 110 days, but 80 days gives them a chance to get up to this sort of level. By growing both uh, a hybrid brassica like a Spitfire, which is all leaf, along with a stubble turnip, uh, you get something that is down in the ground that makes them uh, hunt around a bit more, and they will get more dry matter out of that. So there's much more protein in the leaf, and much more starch energy, water soluble carbohydrate uh, in, in the bulb. So eating both is a much more complete food for any lamb or, or cattle uh, that come in to eat it. Um, to maximize utilization of this, of course, it really should be set stocked um, uh, in blocks so that you move them on small bites uh, each time. Uh, in an ideal world, we'd probably put a strip fence up, but nobody likes moving uh, wet electric fences through no. things like this. So block it off into bites uh, and let them have that. Um, the fertility that this has had means that when we come to sow this back out to grass again, the grass will really move. It's a good cleaning crop, gives you a chance to get rid of a lot of things like creeping thistles and cooch grass and so on, uh, and breaks the sod up ready for the new crop coming in. Uh, is grass your normal follow-on crop? Yeah, you know, as we straighten the grass, it was an old lay before. It's it could be 15 year old, so it was reasonably clean with weeds to be fair. But it was a, just an old pasture. Yeah. yeah. So it's a great way for farmers who are predominantly grassland farmers to bring land back into uh, to young grass and get the benefit of of the first five years of production of a young grass sward. What do we get in terms of ME and protein from them? Um, you're harvesting uh, in the region of. Um, maybe uh, five and a half to six tonnes of dry matter a hectare from both a, a hybrid brassica and from a stubble turnip. As long as the bulb of the stubble turnips get in eating well, the leaf here is well into the 20s in protein and the ME of the bulbs can vary a bit, but sort of between about 11.8 and 12. So it's a really good source of energy as well. As always with these things, it's essential that we have a source of long fibre somewhere nearby. Now, sheep are regularly fed on nothing but 100% brassica crops, but legally they're supposed to have a long fibre and should not have more than 70% of their input coming in from a leafy, leafy plant. Once they get onto it, though, virtually nobody gives them a back run or, or a long uh, a long fibre source. Cattle, you probably have to reduce the amount of, of, of brassica down to maybe 60% of the dry matter intake. Uh, if we had a kale crop here, uh, we would probably be looking at nine and a half to 10 tonnes of dry matter a hectare. If we had a rape crop, pure rape, we'd probably be looking at four, four and a half tonnes of dry matter per hectare. But the big difference between these crops is kale needs a full season. You've got to get kale in early and you've got to spend money on it. Kale will die if it can. If it can find flea beetle or low phosphate or low lime, the little plant will come up, you'll get the, the cotyledons and then the two and then the four broad leaves and then it goes purple and disappears. There's a lot of vigour in this uh, and it gets going on far more farms than kale, even though kale is the highest yielding of the leafy brassicas and kale will also give us more winter feed. So we'll get more February, March utilisation from kale than we will from a hybrid brassica or from a stubble turnip. This, I would say to Stuart, probably try and utilise by mid-January. He's in, you may not think so, he's in quite a favourable area here in Kirkowen, um, and I would say that you will possibly get a second and maybe even a third graze off this. Spitfire stems are extremely digestible, and so instead of walking through them, sheep tend to eat them. Um, which is what we really want, yeah. but it means that it comes back as a sort of a shorter branched out leaf. 
it has more tannins in that regrowth, so it's a bit more bitter, so they're less keen to get onto it, but you do get a, a subsequent graze.